All right, so in today's video, we're gonna be tackling a really cool abstract animation, and this video is brought to you by CoreWeave. They just launched support for using EV in their render farm, so that's really cool and exciting, and we're gonna be working with them at the end of this video, but let's get into how to make this tutorial. So let's hit Shift A here, and we're gonna hit Plane, hit S8, scale that, and hit Control A and apply that scale. So go here, over here to the transform settings, and on the Z axis, give it 0.055. So that's gonna bring him up just a little bit. And then we're gonna get another plane here and give it just zero, bring him down, cause that's gonna be the floor plane we see a bit later. But I'm, I'm gonna hit H and hide that guy for now. And we're gonna be working with this plane here in the shading tab. So let's go over here to shading and let's start um, editing these nodes. So click new, I'm gonna bring this guy over just a little bit so we can start working with it. And then let's go and, go and uh, delete this, add in a mix, mix shader here and we're gonna plug the mix into the uh, surface and let's add in a transparent transparent uh, node and we're gonna plug him to the top. It's very important, the order here. And let's go ahead and add emission here and plug it into the bottom. Now to make sure that this transparent node actually works, go over here to the shading tab and let's make sure that you are in the EV render engine. Go back to the shading tab and right here on blend mode, change it to alpha clip. And it's gonna go black, but that's fine. Let's bring this guy up and add in a color ramp right here. Plug that down there, and let's add in a multiply, which is in the math. So let's go ahead and add in a math node. Change add to uh, multiply, plug that there. And then we need to add two more nodes, which is a Voronoi, right here. Plug both distance to both uh, sockets here of the multiply. And you can start work, you can see it's starting to work down there. Let's add in a Musgrave right over here and plug that into the vector. And you're gonna see some craziness happening. Let's go over here and hit Control T if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. And let's go to the let's go to the object coordinate here. Now you can see all these little guys. Let's start messing with these uh, structures. So let's go to the scale of one here on the, uh, actually, no, scale of six. Sorry, I messed that up. And then here on the scale on the Musgrave, that's gonna be a scale of one. And bring the detail to 12. This is a lot of stuff going on, so we need to go to this color ramp and eliminate some of these rings. Let's bring it over here to right about that. That looks really nice. So let's go ahead and start adding in our camera here. So go to the rendered view, and then go and pick a uh, position you'd like your camera to be in. Now I am lagging a little bit. I'm running it just a gaming laptop to render this, so it's going to be a little bit laggy, but uh, I think that's okay. So Control-Alt-Zero to snap it to view, and we're going to bring this guy down. Let's say I'm going to hit G and middle click to move him up and I'm using G and a couple other things to uh, just move him around. All right, so I like this uh, this composition right here. I'm going to go back to shading, hit zero to go back to my camera view and I'm going to bring this color ramp up just a little bit so we can get a couple more of the bands that I want to see. So this is pretty cool. Now we're going to quickly animate this, um, this pattern. So hit shift A and we're going to add in an empty. Hit plane axis. So this guy, what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna move him up here. I'm gonna hit G to move him. His placement doesn't matter. So up here in the nodes, click object and click that empty. And what that's telling, it's telling this object to control these patterns. You can see it already changed a little bit. So what you can do is we're just gonna go back to layout to it so we can see it happening. Um, I'm gonna take this guy, click on the empty, and I'm gonna give myself 240 frames. And what I'm gonna do is, I think I'm just rotate it on the Y axis. Yeah, that's a pretty cool animation. So you can see once you rotate that empty, it starts to manipulate that texture. So I'm gonna hit zero here. And I want this animation to loop. So I'm gonna click this keyframe, click the very end, click that keyframe again. And right here in the middle, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go rotate it by 20 degrees, click the keyframe, and now, it is a looping animation, just like that. So this is pretty cool, right? But we need to make it more interesting. So we have these cool rings, but I kind of want them to stack a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add in another empty and make sure that his placement stays right there. So click on that plane axis and go ahead and add an array. And then we go to the render view and you can see it just sort of scaled him that direction. We don't want that. So uncheck relative offset and click object offset and then click the empty 001, just like that. And you can see he's down there, which is not what we want. So here, go back to the um, transform settings and right here on the position of empty 001, 
go ahead and change his position to 0 0.05. So now you can just barely see him stack, so we need to go back to the array modifier and give it a number of 6. You can do whatever number you'd like. I like how 6 looks. And now, now we have those stacks, and it's really cool. So let's go and color this really quick. And now this, these, uh, this array is making my computer lag, so if you just want to disable this uh, modifier from view, just click that little computer icon. So now let's go back to coloring this. So what we're going to do is just drag this, hit Control D to bring it down, bring it back a little bit. Let's get a new color ramp, so I'll just duplicate that one. And we need to add some colors here. So I'm just going to go with, so I'm just going to go with a nice purple. So bring this guy here and go down here to purple, more of a pink actually. And then we're going to go up here and add in more of a teal and uh, make it just about there. And then we're going to plug this multiply into the color ramp and the color ramp into the color of the emission. Right here on the Voronoi, change your scale. We're going to change it to two. And then we're going to take this guy here and just move him a little bit up this way and bring this guy all the way in. And now you can start seeing a color difference. And let's strength at 2.4. And then let's go ahead and go back to the normal. And then bring this array back to view by clicking that little computer icon. Go to rendered. And now we have this super cool animation. So you can bring it over here. And see it moves around. And it's really nice. And my computer's lagging even more. But again, I'm using a laptop, but it's okay. So now for this bottom plane that we took from view, I'm going to hide this top plane. We're just going to add some simple grunge texture you can see in my original animation. You can see in my original animation, there's a little bit of a, sort of a grunge texture going on down there. So we're going to recreate that with just a simple musgrave. So go back to shading, and I'm going to click new, and I'm going to make him metallic, and then I'm going to bring out down the color just a little bit, and then add a color ramp to um, the roughness here. So just bring that right over into the roughness. Now let's add in a musgrave. And then hit Control T to add in that texture setup and bring it over here to the object coordinate. And then bring the Musgrave texture right here. And now you can start seeing the Musgrave affect everything that's going on. So we're going to give this a scale of 3. Um, actually, we're going to give it a scale of 4 here. And then give the detail all the way up to 16, dimension to 0, and lacanority to 1.3. And that's going to give us nice grunge. And so let's go back to layout here. Bring that plane back in and hit Render. And now you're going to have a nice grungy ground, very chrome looking, this neon look. And the last thing we're going to do is add in some uh, depth of field. So let's go ahead and add in one more empty. I like to use empties just to sort of control things because you can't see them when you click render, uh, which is a good rule of thumb. So let's bring this guy over to where we want the camera to actually focus. So I'd say right about there is where I want it to focus on. And then click on camera. Go here, click on depth of field, and for focus object, click the new empty, which is empty two. And so now you can see back here, it's starting to get blurry. So let's give the f-stop at 1.8 to make it even uh, more blurry here in the background. And so now back here is blurry and over here is in focus and you can move it around to wherever you want your camera to focus. All right, so now this is finished. I'm gonna go and file, save as, and I'm call it looping. Just like that, I'm gonna save it to my desktop. So now this is saved, let's go ahead and use CoreWeave to render this. So if you don't know what CoreWeave is, it's a render farm, it's a really cool company. They only serve the Blender community right now, they're even giving to the Blender Foundation. It's a really cool company, and they just launched support for the Eevee render engine. It used to be just Cycles, but now it uses both, so we're going to go head over to CoreWeave and render this. Now before we do that, we do need to set up our render settings correctly. Uh, just make sure that you are using a PNG sequence for this, and that's really the only thing you need to worry about. And I'm using the default 1920 by 1080. Let's stick to that. All right, now we're here at CoreWeave. We're going to be using Concierge. Um, right here you can see it says Concierge, which is their professional render farm. So let's go over here to File Manager, and I'm going to go over here and add file and pick Looping. All right, so now I have my file loaded up into Concierge. It's right here. It's called Looping. So I'm going to go over here and click Launch Render. So right there. Now this is very important. If you're not using Blender 2.81, you cannot render using their EV capabilities. So click Rent. Blender 2.81, of course, if you're using Blender 2.81, and then go down here, click EV, and click Animation. Right here on Frame Selection, I'm going to go 1, 2, 2, 4, 0. So that's how many frames are in here, and I'm just going to click Render. So now, we're going to go over here to Job Manager. You can go right here and say View Details, and we're going to just wait, and I'm going to tell you guys how long this took uh, once it's finished. 
All right, and the job is finished. Now you can see it was started at 53.23 and finished at 57.39. So really, really fast for 240 frames at 1080p, and this only cost me 71 cents. Only 71 cents. It's really, really inexpensive. Anybody can use this for your projects, especially if you're doing client work. For the time that it took to render this, it's a perfect deal. Uh, so I would go and use this product if you're wanting to do some quick renders. It's an amazing company. Check them out. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and thanks for watching.